Hey guys, DC Multiverse Dude here. How are you? Um, we are in July, unbelievably, and it's been a big year for the McFarlane DC Multiverse line. And I thought it's time for a first half of the year recap and a top 10 um, to sort out, you know, the best figures for this first half of the year. Um, see if there's any you've missed, uh, see if there's any I've missed, uh, and to give you my thoughts on the best of the best for this line for this year, um, for the first six months. So, look, the ground rules are pretty loose. Uh, it's my list, I'll do what I want, but um, essentially this will cover any figures that I personally have got this year. Now, you might have got them in December last year if you're in the States. Um, a lot of these figures came out over December, January, um, a couple anyway. Uh, I got them in this half, uh, first half of this year, so I'm including them. And, um, you know, I'm also going to include figures I got just, you know, a week ago uh, in early July. So it's not just a hard 30 June end date. Um, it's going to be a rough list for my first half of the year. Um, but I hope you find this helpful and I hope you um, enjoy. So let's get to it. So coming in at number 10 um, is Batman Hush, the blue variant. Now, don't get me wrong. This is an awesome figure. Love it. Uh, love everything about it. Love that head sculpt. Love the colouring. Um, you know, in ordinary circumstances, this would be a little bit higher up the list. But we've seen it before. We've seen it before a few times. Um, we've seen the grey and black variant. Uh, we've seen um, the Batman as Two-Face, or Two-Face as Batman variant. This mould has been used a few times. Um, the Three Jokers, Batman also uses a similar sort of a body bark. It's just very familiar at this point. So for that reason alone, Hush Batman, the blue and grey variant um, is number 10, but it's still an excellent figure if you can actually find it anywhere, which is pretty brutal. Um, particularly this figure wasn't released in Australia, so um, it's been hard to get, but um, it's important in my collection. It's basically my default Batman for now and uh, really glad to have it. Coming in at number nine is the Builder Figure Beast Boy from the Titans Wave. Now, this guy really surprised me. It's not really a design of Beast Boy that I was familiar with, but putting this guy together um, was really, really satisfying. And um, he's just really fun. And he, he stands in sort of contrast to a lot of the other um, character designs that McFarlane typically favors and puts out. He's big, colorful, uh, sort of cartoony, but um, not sort of, overly stylized. Um, he's got this wonderful sort of texturing throughout his suit. The head sculpt's immaculate. He fits together well. Um, he's not one of those builder figures that falls apart in your hands. Um, he's overall just sort of a joy to put together, a joy to collect and a joy to display. So for that reason, Beast Boy Builder Figure comes in at number nine. At number eight, we have Duke Thomas, The Signal. Now, this is not a character I knew a lot about. Um, this is a sort of Snyder Capullo creation um, from the last few years. Um, but the more I read about the character, sort of the more interesting he was as a member of the Bat family. And in hand, this figure is just surprisingly fun. Um, he looks really, really simple, but he's got like terrific texture. And there's a mixture between sort of flat paint, texture, embossing, um, he, he's just sort of fun to hold and fun to look at and fun to play with. Um, and he just stands out on the shelf. He's bright yellow and black. Um, I just really, you know, he's great fun and um, really unique and one of the big surprises uh, for 2023. So if you haven't jumped on Duke Thomas the Signal, uh, I'd say get him because um, who knows how long it's going to be till we get another one. For that reason, he is number eight. At number seven, we have the Arkham City Riddler. Now, we've all been wanting sort of a Riddler for a long time. We had the Batman movie Riddler, which didn't really fit the bill. Um, this is as close as we've gotten up till now to a comic book Riddler. Um, it's a really cool design for the Riddler um, with, you know, it retains that sort of iconic green and purple color scheme with the cane, the bowler hat, but it's got sort of a, a punkier edge with those boots and the, the loosened tie and the glasses. It's a, it's a really cool design and uh, done really well. Um, you know, great sort of uh, sculpting of the question marks, the big painted one. He, he's just fun and he's fun to pose. He's got heaps of personality. Um, 
What I'm curious to see is whether the forthcoming uh, classics version of the Riddler, um, which is sort of a more old school design, comic design, will usurp this at my end of the year. Um, I'd love to do a comparison when that comes out, I might just do it. But for now, uh, Arkham City Riddler is a very, very worthy number seven. Number six for the first half of the year is the Page Punches Aquaman range Aqualad. Now, obviously, this is part of the four uh, page punches with comic books um, in the Aquaman range that came out a little bit earlier this year with Black Manta and Aquaman and Ocean Master. Um, Aqualad, um, I think, is one of the best. He has this really, really nice, clean comic book design, um, but there's detail where it counts. So you've got the great sort of scale texture You've got this awesome water dagger uh, accessory and his head sculpt, you know, for this iteration of the character is just gorgeous. Um, so for that reason, Aqualad, you know, fits beautifully in the Teen Titans display. Um, and uh, yeah, I just can't stop playing with him for that reason. He's number six. At number five, we have the Blue Beetle movie, Hame Reyes Blue Beetle, in battle mode. Now, I reviewed this one on my channel recently, and I gushed about this figure, the sculpt, the paintwork, um, the uh, hands, the, all the accessory hands that he comes with that give him so much personality. Um, this is a really awesome figure. I'm scared people are going to sleep on it because the movie's not going to be popular. Um, but, you know, the upside to that is it's probably going to be on clearance in three or four months. Get it. Buy this figure. It's one of the best uh, Harmony Reyes Blue Beetle figures there is. I can't think of any I've seen better. I've looked at some of the older versions in the different lines. Um, you know, the DC icons. I, I don't think it compares. I think this is the best. Even if you're more interested in the comic versions of characters, this one fits the bill. Um, loads of personality. The biggest flaw is that his wings aren't really that adjustable. And uh, you can't really, you know, articulate them. They're sort of just posed there and he takes up a lot of space. But that's a nitpick. This is a great figure, uh, one of McFarlane's best for the year. Um, definitely a worthy number five. At number four, we have Michael Keaton Batman from The Flash. Now, this is a really hard to come by figure, particularly in the States. Um, you know, I would have thought with the movie bombing <laughs> that this would be harder to, sorry, easier to come by, but you know, Michael Keaton is Michael Keaton and the hardcore collectors love him. And rightly so, this is an amazing figure. Um, the head sculpt, I think, yeah, there it is, is good. Like, it, it's it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Um, the, the body is sort of cast in a mixture of matte and uh, textured finishes. Um, you know, the bat symbol is iconic. Um, really, what I'm all about is this cloth cape. Now he was given the cloth cape so he could fit easily inside the Batmobile, uh, I know that, but I just love the cloth cape. Um, you know, I haven't posed it well, but the posing capabilities of a cloth cape are so dynamic and so flexible, and you can really sort of change the, the mood of the figure, the look of the figure, you know, based on how you position the cape. And it really just makes me wish McFarlane would do more cloth capes. Um, that's the takeaway. That's why this guy is number four. I love him. The, the question for me is whether the uh, 1989 version that is coming with the gold label Batmobile uh, soon will sort of replace this guy on the list. Um, it, it's an open question. You know, the head sculpt looks a little bit strange on the 89 one, that the neck uh, sculpt uh, doesn't quite match the Keaton look quite like this one. But of course, it comes with all that great detail, like the golden utility belt and... Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether this guy maintains his spot. But for right now, he's definitely a worthy number four for the year. Number three for the first half of the year is Jay Garrick, The Flash. Uh, I love this figure so much. This is what I wish McFarlane would do more of. Classic characters, classic designs, no BS, no embellishments, no alternate versions, no speed metal versions. They're all fine. Give us this first. Make this the priority and then go nuts and go wild with the sculpt. Reuse it, you know, put chains on him, whatever you want. Uh, I just think this is uh, a great sculpt. From what I can tell, it's a unique sculpt. It's an awesome body buck. It's sort of just, just the right amount of muscularity. You can got to see all these nice wrinkles. But other than those like 
little details that accentuate everything. It's just a really, really classic design pulled straight from the comics. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's pure and it's fun and he's poseable and he looks great on the shelf. And, um, you know, he's an easy number three. More like this McFarlane, please. My number two figure for the first half of 2023 is the Dark Side War uh, Calabac Mega Figure. Now, I love the Mega Figures. They're often just my favorite figures that McFarlane puts out. Um, they're usually big, beefy, crazy, a lot of villains, uh, which I like, and Calabac's no exception. Um, he's really big, he's really heavy. Um, the head sculpt is immaculate. The detail on the sort of skin, all that cracked skin is amazing. Um, you know, he just looks sort of ripped out of the comic book, um, which again, you know, that's my preference. I love the classic comic design and, you know, this is a more modern version of Calabac, but it's still the sort of quintessential modern comic Calabac. And I think he's great. If you haven't picked this guy up, highly recommend it. He's worth the money and we don't get Calabac figures that often. So, you know, what are you waiting for? Easy number two for the first half of 2023. So my top figure for the first half of 2023, my absolute favorite, is the Aquaman Page Punches Black Manta. Now, um, a lot of people have gushed about this figure already, but it, it, it's really mind blowing how good this figure is. Um, the, the level of detail in this sculpt from top to bottom is just amazing. There's a, such a mix of textures and and um, and uh, tones and there's matte and there's shiny. Um, he, he just looks great. Like just on the shelf, uh, despite being largely all black plastic uh, with a few accents, he looks great. Um, what really, you know, cuts, lifts this figure to be a cut above, I think, are the accessories. Now, he comes with this sort of awesome trident, which is, you know, got a really great design a lot of detail. He also comes with two arm blades that can be removed. Now, he's only got one as I've posed him, um, but you know, the, the, the potential for posing uh, is fantastic. And in terms of the overall art direction, this isn't sort of a, a particular translation of any comic. It, it's, a, it's a new sort of design, but it's, it sort of bridges that gap between instantly iconic Black Manta, but something fresh and something new. Um, and I, I just think this figure is really menacing, um, it, it really unique, um, great level of detail in the sculpt. I mean, the fact that there's just no reused parts at all, this is a completely new sculpt from top to bottom, is just amazing. Um, definitely, definitely one of the best um, for the year. And I highly, highly recommend you grab Black Manta uh, before he disappears. There will be an Aquaman 2 movie Black Manta coming out later this year, um, but which is probably, you know, a more traditional design, but I doubt he'll beat this one. Uh, so for the first half of 2023, this is the figure to beat for me. Um, I hope this list has been uh, helpful for you in picking out some figures you might have missed or not considered. Um, hit the like button if you got anything out of it. Uh, let me know what your top figures are for the year in the comments. And please subscribe. I've just made 900 subscribers. If I could make 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I'd be so thrilled. So um, if you could help me with that, it would be so awesome. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. This video was brought to you with the support of Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles. For a great range of toys, from DC Multiverse to Black Series to Marvel Legends, Hot Toys and more, uh, visit Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles and use the offer code DCDUDE, that's DCDUDE, uh, for an exclusive discount month to month. Could be 5% off or $5 off at checkout. Try the code, see what you get, place an order with Fett's and you won't be disappointed. And we thank Fett's for their continued support of this channel.